Kemano. On the Passover night, it's not because Israel was more holy than Egypt. All of them were idol worshippers. Both Israel and Egypt were in sin. None of them was better than the other. All of them were useless where, where righteousness is concerned. But on the Passover night, the condition was not your state. The condition was to kill an animal and put the blood. Whether Israel or Egypt, anybody that will put that blood, when the angel of death pass, it will pass over their house. Their lifestyle does not affect it. How they are living does not. If a man carry five wives and enter the room, the, him and his five wives are saved. You're not hearing me. Because it's not about the man. It's about the blood on the door. I came to tell somebody here, the devil is a liar. Your amen is still cold. Amen. Sit down, sit down. I'm going so. Even if an Israelite does not put the blood on his door, the angel of death will wire him. It doesn't matter. It's not about the man. It's about what Jesus has done. Somebody shout out, thank Jesus. It's not about me. It's about him. The grace of God. I didn't hear your amen like thunder. I don't want to charge now. It's too early. I just say bring up. I said, whoo. Even animal blood pacified God. See, if what Jesus died for was your conduct, he didn't need to die. Because if it's for conduct, animal blood was already doing it every year. The animal blood covered for their conduct. Every year, they offered the animal. Their sin was covered. And they lived in victory. And they enjoyed immunity. And they enjoyed protection. And they enjoyed defense. Every year, the animal blood. So why did Jesus have to die? Why did Jesus have to, Why did he have to give us a superior blood to animal? Because God is not dealing with conduct. God is dealing with the nature. The blood of animal cannot change nature. So we needed the blood of Jesus to change our nature. From sinners to righteous people. I don't know who I'm talking to here. That's why he offered his blood and the blood is eternal. So your change of nature is eternal. You're not hearing me now. The blood is eternal. Therefore your change of nature is eternal. Once saved, always saved. Follow me carefully. Did I say follow me carefully? Yes. So Jesus died spirit, soul, and body. Why? So a man can be born again. A man can receive the impartation of the nature of God. It's called eternal life. Jesus died spirit, soul, and body. Why? So that man can receive the impartation of eternal life not the covering of his conduct but the change of his nature that's why jesus had to die spirit soul and body to change the nature of a sinner not the conduct the conduct is because of the nature when the nature changes the conduct will change that's why he had to die you are not a sinner because of what you've done you are a sinner by nature you are not a man because you're wearing trousers. women wear trousers. you are not a man because you wear skirt and blouse men wear skirt and blouse yes you heard me it's not a mistake if you go to fiji island men wear skirt and blouse in fiji island including christians and they go to church with it and god answers their prayer even in ireland men wear skate and blouse you are not even in scotland you are not a man because you're wearing clothes you are a man because you are a man the clothes you wear don't change you you are who you are because of who you are so if you are born again and you lie you are still born again are you lying? Yeah. 
Yes. There are people who lie. But it doesn't change them from being righteous. Just like wearing a skirt and blouse doesn't make you a woman. Hey, wake up. If you're hearing me shout, I hear. That's why Jesus died. To change the nature. If it's conduct, he doesn't need to die. Animals will take care of that. But something more serious than conduct was why he died. To change the nature of a sinner and make him righteous. Are you with me here? Yeah. God made him to be seen for us. Who knew no sin? That we who are sinners by nature might become righteous by nature. It was for change of nature that he died. Somebody shout hallelujah. He is saved forever. John called it eternal life. Paul called it Christ in you. Paul called it Christ. John called it eternal life. They call it different things, but they mean the same thing. Paul doesn't call it eternal life. Paul's eternal life description is Christ in you. John describing eternal life calls it eternal life. Eternal zoe. Eternal zoe. That is what was given to you when you believed Jesus. Not when you felt good, when you believed. Not when you started behaving like a Christian, when you believed. You didn't hear me. Not when you changed your name. From Bobby to Angelina. No. At the point when you believed, from that point, you have eternal life. Lift your right hand and say, I believe. I received eternal life. I have eternal life in me now. Say eternal Zoe. You know what Zoe is? Zoe is a Greek word for the God kind of life. The exact life in God, in man. I have the eternal Zoe. God's exact life in me. That means if I have God's exact life, God cannot be sick. Am I in power city? God cannot be poor. God cannot be stranded. Why? I am joined to the Lord. Therefore, I and the Lord are one spirit. What cannot defeat him cannot defeat me. Why? Because I have his life. The Zoe of God resonates on my inside. We share the same DNA. See, I hear you. I have God's life. I have God's nature. That is what we call born again. The life God gives us is Jesus. So Christ, who is eternal in nature, eternal in nature, lives inside you. That's eternal life. Christ, who is eternal in nature, lives inside you. That's what we call eternal life. Christ in you that's eternal life that's eternal life eternal life is a being his name is jesus christ john 17 this is life eternal john 17 3 that they may know you the only true god and jesus whom you sent so jesus is eternal life he that has the son has life jesus is eternal life eternal life is not a feeling it's a being it's a person eternal life is a person it's not a feeling say i hear you say i hear you this life is in his son this life is not like an experience i feel something no it's a person whether you feel it or you don't feel it when you hear the right word and you believe it he comes inside once you believe and you confess him he that confession makes the being a reality inside you you didn't hear me hear me well hear me hear me because i'm dealing with concepts here 
when you hear the message of his death burial and resurrection and it makes meaning to you and you believe that message you are believing in that message makes the message a reality it's not like god comes from heaven to enter you no the bola no gaga jesus is inside that world jesus is inside that world so the moment you believe the world the jesus in the world that you believe becomes a reality inside you he is the world so eternal life is a person eternal life is not a feeling that's why whether you feel it or you don't feel it he's there that life is there why are we eternally saved why are we eternally saved because jesus died once and for all why are we eternally saved because jesus died once and for all he didn't die twice he died once and for all never to die again never to die again never to die again he lives in our hearts and he sits at the right hand of the father at the same time not pleading continuously jesus is not in a state of begging no no he's not pleading continually his life in the father's presence is the plead did you hear me he's not pleading he's not begging no just that he is sitting at the right hand of the father when the father sees him he sees the plea it's not like jesus the same father i beg i beg i beg i beg i beg no 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 that he is there as a man representing you when the father sees him seeing him is the plea do you understand it's like if somebody respects me even if he doesn't like my daughter even if you don't like jemima but you respect and you like me when me and jemima are with you as long as i'm standing there you will be nice to her even if i say nothing even if i'm just moving around you'll be telling her how now jemima you're such a wonderful girl in fact i like you i like the way you talk as long as i am there you can't talk nonsense as long as i'm there you'll be you even if you don't like her you'll pretend because i'm there my presence there is the plea Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not like Jesus says, Father, I beg. Eh, that Jesus is standing before the Father, the pleasure of the Father. As long as the Father is seeing Jesus, his heart is good towards you. Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. If, if I am standing around Jemima and by mistake she pushed down your television and he fall down, you tell her, Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, Jemima, don't worry. In fact, thank you for pushing it down. I've been looking for her to fall down because you want to make me happy. I'm teaching, I'm teaching, I'm teaching that the Father is there and Jesus is standing before the Father. Anything about me makes the Father happy just that the father is seeing jesus that's why that's what he means by he ever lives to make the intercession is not prayer he's standing between the father and me so that as the father looks at him he smiles for me even if i fall down the father will say lie down well <laughs> if i'm teaching shout i hear you thank you lord